Support for today's show comes from Fallout 76. Bethesda Game Studios, the award-winning creators of Skyrim and Fallout 4, welcome you to Fallout 76, the online prequel where every surviving human is a real person. Work together, or not, to survive. Fallout 76 will be available worldwide on Wednesday, November 14th. Pre-order now at participating retailers and play the beta first on Xbox One. Welcome to Chris Radio. We're very good at this. It's episode 174. I am leaning off my chair to the side with my feet up on my desk. Wow, that sounds nice, actually. Let me get one of those going. I thought it would be comfortable, like I'd be casual for this half of the show, and it's super uncomfortable. Yeah, I'd find that, especially for that, for like recording, you can't sit in a different what? Yeah, you have to sit uncomfortably straight, uh, facing forward, air conditioning off for the duration of a podcast. And here we That's are. the law. Crucible Radio. That's the podcast about PvP. I'm Bones. This is Birds and Swain. Say hello. Hi. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, it's interesting. Hey. I was thinking to myself, you know, Bones has been doing a lot of introductions of us. Yeah, because we got feedback. <laughs> oh, can't tell. Well, that's the thing. Is it just that they can't tell you and me apart or that we don't say birds, bones, and Swain enough time in the episode? Look, it's definitely just you and me. Swain's voice is clearly more distinctive. Um, all right. All but right. All right. You want to tell the, the tattoos difference? tattoos give me a different <laughs> yeah, The tattoos make you really stand out on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it does. You can hear them. Hey, yeah, this is Swain. He's a Philly boy. Uh I, I, I talk like this, or I talk like this, and Bonesy just talks like this, and he just keeps talking and 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 talking. This, but you don't know that because it's edited. Yeah, he's just, he's just cutting out all those, uh, <laughs> call them bone gaps. Ooh. <laughs> if you experience bone gaps for more than four hours, call your healthcare. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you might be liable for. But yeah, no, I got genuine feedback a while back that, we, you know, we should say our names. And I was like, you know, there's been 150 episodes, but I guess you started here and it wouldn't make sense. And we don't say who we are. So let's let's share a little secret of the show. Um, if you leave us constructive feedback anywhere other than YouTube, not only will we read it and share it with each other, but we will be hugely, hugely affected by it. And yeah. It probably change the, probably like directly change the next five episodes in a big way. It's clearly been a while since somebody asked us to stop rambling so much. I've top. definitely lost sleep over it. <laughs> yeah. Someone on Reddit did say that last week's episode provided zero information. So this week we decided to provide any information at all. You're welcome. See, yep. we take our feedback very seriously. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about Destiny, if that's really what uh, y'all tuned in for. <laughs> if that's really bands, why you're here. You just want <laughs> Destiny facts. Um, all right. Here's a Destiny fact. Um, have we been playing Destiny? And what have we been up to in Destiny? 15 hours gambit. Did you, uh, <laughs> did you see it? No. <laughs> And what is it that you're referring to? Swain was Swain was in such a bad mood in the first 30 <laughs> seconds of reporting, recording this podcast because he. I I if you're having meatball troubles for I feel 15 bad for hours, you. just meatballs. during Curse Week. I'm not counting the other like 12 hours or so I played the other two days leading up to it to just maybe get a chance on an off week. Um, I've played a lot of Gambit. I'm on my way to resetting for the third time. I want the Dragon title. I just need two more meatballs to spawn. And this meatballs is just the primeval, the special primeval that happens. And currently, if you get it, it's a guaranteed drop of the ship or the sparrow. And those are what I need. I need two. And right before this podcast, I was playing Gambit with friends. And I was like, ah, I'm going to sign off. Like, I got, ten, I got 10, 15 minutes before the podcast. 
let me get in the mindset. Let me, you know, finish up things in the tower before I go. And the immediate game that I stopped <laughs> playing, they got it. Oh, I gee, also uh, listen up. <laughs> Give my man the meatball. In the time you were telling us that, I scrolled back to uh, last night's chat in our main Discord hangout, and uh, in the middle of the night, you just enter. Fuck this meatball to hell. <laughs> Speaking to no one. <laughs> yep. It'll come back, Swain. I haven't it's, seen it once. It's so. good that I like playing Gambit and I'm getting pretty good at it. I enjoy Gambit. I'm, yeah, this, you, isn't, this isn't like me being upset I have to play a lot of Gambit. This is me upset that this is so rare. <laughs> um. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, I got once, I got it for the malfeasance. I've seen it one other time. Thanks, Otter, for not helping me kill it. You're dead to me. <laughs> Swain, we wanted the hobby. We wanted the grind. This is what you wanted. <laughs> Swain's enemies list has got number two slot, Otter. Number one slot, the meatball. <laughs> Who does Swain hate in life? Just his best friends. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, any meatball. I will say, I've big thank you to... EK and T1 Riot, they've been running with me uh, the past week a lot to kind of help me just churn through wins. We've won a lot. There was like between the 12 hours I played with them, we lost once. Uh, And they're like learning from them and learning that because they have way more Gambit than I do, especially EK. He is number one in Gambit wins currently overall. And uh, he still doesn't have dragged in either. <laughs> so if that gives you an idea of how many, how rare the meatball is, uh, just look at it that way. Um, this is uh, this is funny too because the other night I was running in a three stack and I tagged birds and I said, "Hey, come play gambit with us." And all he said was, "Hmm, that sounds stressful," and didn't respond any <laughs> anymore. And I was like, "What the hell? Like you don't play gambit with your friends?" And now I get it a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, man, I'm not trying to find <laughs> I love it. I love it. And it's simple in some ways, and I hope it becomes a little bit more in depth in the future when it comes to like oh, I would just love like more spawns. Like if the maps had more spawns. Ooh, and you yeah, didn't just idea. like it's like right now, the first thing we do is like, oh, there's an invader. Like there's set a set cadence to every match. And it's like, okay, we're gonna be the first to invade going to prevent their invasions and when they do invade we're going to set up in all of the spawn locations so that as soon as they spawn in we're behind them and we can just kill them and it's like that's not the best <laughs> there's only four and there's there's four people there's four you know four spawn points it's gonna be very easy to single out where someone is so yeah. Well, go. I'll brag for go you, forward. to your credit. I mean, I hadn't played Gambit with you particularly in maybe a week. And you're, you've are you been on this grind, and I hopped in for some games. I think it was the other night. And uh, you, you were calling out the invade, like, before I could turn and look. And they were just, like, dead as soon as I got a bearing on the, on the, on the layout of the map. So it, it's clear that it's worn off on you and you've got an eye for it now. And you were just like, uh, that'll be middle or left. Yeah. Left side. <laughs> it's just like dead before I could even, do you need my help? No. Okay. All right. I'll just be over here on beach killing enemies. I, I will say I'm probably used all of my RNG in the raid this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got yeah, a thousand you did. voices and mm. you know what? Maybe I deserve this. <laughs> <laughs> That thing is nasty, and I've been saying it for two weeks that it's going to drive everyone insane once more people get it in Gambit. It's it, it's going to be crazy, but, you know, I haven't got it yet, so. You know, it was interesting to, like, to now that, the, you know, enough people have it to, like, watch the, the sort of gameplay with it and see how people use it, because it's not, there's not a lot of parallels. I mean, you could maybe compare it to Telesto, sort of in the play style. It's like. Telesto, if you could shoot something on the other side of the map. Yeah, you shoot something on the map, and while you're doing it, just like swing wildly and sp- spray it across a, <laughs> a big line because any one of those little greeblies can can just melt somebody. Greeblies, um, nice. Very effective. Yeah, Swain loves it when I say greeblies, guys. It's a good word. It's a real Greeblies. word, it's good. <laughs> it's 
Good word, great word, and uh, yeah, refers to any small little doodad kind of thing. Yeah, um, it's a, it's you like it. I I love it actually. Um, it is a little unwieldy, <laughs> and I think that's built in to be that way because they don't want you to have like the most precision with it. Um, I find myself switching back between like Chattering Bone, Ikelos, and Thousand Voices. And then my tried and true with like Ace of Spades and Crooked Fang in those like two top and bottom uh, loadouts. And I just like Ace of Spades because like popping PVE heads is really satisfying and it helps clear a little bit better with the explosive rounds. But like I, there's something about having Chattering Bone that gives me a little bit more range that I like too. So yeah, a thousand voices is great. It's just uh, really hard to get. My, shout out to Zia. <laughs> He's got like 12 of them. Uh, Bonzi, what about you? What have you been up to? Well, I've been playing on my Titan again. It's back in my rotation. <laughs> um, I've actually had a fun fun sort of renaissance that I didn't really expect. And uh, to over explain it like I do. Yeah, I am a Titan now. Uh, I was leveling my Titan finally. And I was like, not down with doing the campaign. I like it, but I kind of wanted more time so that when I did the third one, I would like watch the cutscenes and really like take it in again. So I was like, I'm going to level it in Crucible, which is awful and grueling just to just play with whatever crappy blue stuff you get. So I was like, I'm just going to get to level 50 in Crucible, and which means I have to use whatever old gear I hadn't deleted because I can't use my level 50 required stuff. One of the things on my Titan that I hadn't dismantled was fighting lion. I was like, all right, fine. I I got far enough in the campaign to get the new striker subclass because I might as well level that up while I'm doing crucible. So I'm messing around with that. I still got my synthesis. That's all fun. But I put on fighting lion and I think I had dire promise on me when I first started using it. And I just like really found it enjoyable. And I, No, it's because I knew I had to just grind out levels in Crucible. I am done with my Luna's grind for now, so I'm not playing super, uh, you know, worried about my KD and all that. I'm on my Titan. I'm going fast again, and I'm really just, like, throwing my body at people, just, like, not aping, just not caring. Like, I'm going to die more than usual. And I think that mentality and just really not caring a little bit mixed with a gun I hadn't used in a while and a grenade launcher like that made me figure it out because I was taking sillier risks and just seeing if that worked and trying for bounce shots. And can I, you know, get them up close with a grenade and and get that melee combo. And I think it just clicked. It's been a weapon that I know a lot of people use to great effect. I'm thinking of like, you know, cami cakes and keen koala, anyone who has a cuckoo sound, I guess. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, I never really thought it was for me. I'm like, I bet you do great things with it. You talk it up. It's really fun to see you do it, but I just can't do it. But it finally clicked now. And even though I'm level 50 on my Titan, getting good gear and I can use my Lunas and whatever, I'm keeping it on and mixed with Sentinel for that overshield. And I got the uh, the Nightfall shoddy, the Toil and Trouble with the Masterworked range on it. It's really fun. Uh, it's just been part of my regular loadout. No oh, man. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually fun to have something new, like to just The Fighting try. Lion Catalyst came out this week. Ooh. Yeah, good timing on that, because I didn't do it because I knew it was going to be like a focal point of this this uh, little event, but that was a really nice, nice treat to something I genuinely like. It's funny about this shotgun, too, because I'm grinding Nightfalls to get this cool, perfect rule masterwork shotgun, and then Fallout DMs me, and he's like, so probably going to like totally change your opinion on which shotgun to use right now. And I'm like, ah, oh, great. <laughs> Thanks, man. Let me enjoy this for a little bit. I won't spoil it, but I think he's got some content that might be His out by the time this broken. episode is out. So it's, it's I know he's slow on, on a lot of these things right now. Might be a yeah, little bit before that video comes out, but he it's told, he told me he's going to make it happen. because It's like something he's like, this blew my mind and I can't explain it. And when fallout can't explain something, you know, it must be interesting. So oh, I think I know what it is. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people, no, while I'm saying this are like, yeah. 
go check it out. I don't know. Mystery. Have you, uh, you unlocked the catalyst yet? I haven't finished it, but I have it on there. So I'm going, you know, I got, I got to like complete bounties and stuff like yeah, that, but I'll, I'll get it soon. Fun. Uh, it is, it is just fun to have a loadout that is shotgun fighting lion, whatever power I have. And then Sentinel after playing Ace of Spades on a Warlock for so long, like I realized I wasn't getting any of the precision kills for the Iron Banner bounty at all because <laughs> all of my kills were just like blunt force trauma style. And I was like, oh, I guess I should use something else while I'm in Iron Banner. But it is really fun. It feels so different from my Warlock play style movement wise and uh, and the way I approach things. But it's resulted in like a genuine fun in quick play that I don't. Uh, it well, it counters my my serious comp grind, which I'll resume at some point soon. But it's been good. Man, comp is on my list once I finish this gambit stuff. Don't put it off too long. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it'll get tough. I, I've made I some good connections while playing gambit that someone can <laughs> carry me. Birds, you're going for it. I did. I uh, I've been I've been eyeing the comp playlist from a distance. And um, no, you know, I, I, I think I'm kind of, uh, you, Bonesy, you were talking about it in chat earlier, but just the idea that like this week is sort of Bungie's like, like you said there wasn't enough to do <laughs> in Destiny. You did, you dared us. And so we've got Festival of the Lost. We've got uh, Banner. We've got Curse Week. Oh, just, oh, yeah, all the other stuff going. Like there's a lot to do. Um, and I think, you know, I mean, I've always, um, I don't know if, if I call myself a casual, but like, I think I, I have a fairly fixed amount of time week after week that, um, I put into destiny. I think it's been useful for me to kind of like zoom out and go, okay, I'm just accepting. I cannot do everything that there is to do in this game. What is it that I want to get out of it? Um, and realizing that, that, um, that just straight up crucible is my shit, like, Gambit is great, but I think I've gotten out of it kind of what I wanted to get out of it. Um, and yeah, like when you sort of take the rewards away, um, you know, sort of what's what's still fun, what makes sense to play. Um, for me, that's definitely just straight up Crucible. And uh, I know that a weak spot for me right now is some of the uh, the comp mode stuff. So yeah, dove in, just start grinding out that Luna quest. It really sort of without realizing it, because I think it's so easy to focus on the other stuff about like, well, this game is really tough or what's my glory score. It really reinforces like it, you can't have bad habits and you're mm -hmm. breaking them without realizing it, which is hard, but ultimately good because I did finally jump back into quick play after getting Luna's and was like, Whoa, I'm like, I'm like playing so much smarter, so much more efficient oh, yeah. and I'm not doing stupid stuff because I really did have to, get it together, really nail my aim on mouse and keyboard and like play good. And that ultimately felt good, even though I didn't realize it while it was happening. Yeah. I mean, I think even just the change in game modes, like getting back into a survival mindset or um, a countdown mindset of like, yeah, you know, you got two or three kills and traded on the last one. Like, no, it's, it's not worth it. Just like, please stay alive. Do not, do not die. Like, do not leave it to your team to finish this off. Get your kill, but really um, keep that KD up. Um, I think that's, yeah, it's just a shift in mindset. You know, there's there's no sort of universal there. I think a big part of it for me, too, that I felt comfortable going into is just that my loadout is so locked in now. I talked about it last week. Um, but I just feel like I'm using something that I like. I could see myself playing it over and over, and it happens to be the meta right now. So mm -hmm. um, it was nice. It's nice. Um yeah, and also just going like, yeah, it's fine. You know, maybe I'll get to the raid when I get to it. <laughs> Rush. Not in any particular We'll catch them one day, Bones. <laughs> this is going <laughs> to sound like very dumb, but I like justified something to myself in my own twisted way of like letting myself play tons of video games. But I realized since Forsaken launched, I've played uh, Spider-Man, God of War, and I'm now 10 hours into Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's too much video games total. You know, like for me to actually be at 600 light right now, I've played too much. But it does help me in a weird, twisted way to realize like Destiny can't be a 100% focus. 
And at least I'm enjoying other stuff. And it just so happens I've had a lot of free time lately. Uh, but yeah, like, like back to what you're saying, birds, there's too much this week and I want the stuff, but I'm looking at it and I get on, I'm like, yeah, we want to play some gambit, maybe get that meatball to show up. How the heck am I supposed to do all this festival of the lost stuff just to, you know, grind out oh, strikes for that's things. Totally, it's crazy. Yep. That's totally there's too much. I'm totally taking advantage of all three weeks that that is going to be around. True. Right. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's one, one last little while. Uh, I'm playing some iron banner cause it's a way to get gear on my Titan where I don't have to do the campaign and stuff like that. Like I'm finding the time, but there truly is a lot. So I just want to like follow the stuff that feels good. And that is goofing around with a shotgun fighting lion loadout and that sort of thing and playing the raid when I got some time on the weekends, but yeah, it's kind of, okay. Moment of this festival of lost rolled around. Uh, the first question I asked is like, "All right, what's the loot for this thing?" And then the second thing I said was like, uh, "Well, okay, there are those shaders. I will want those. Can I just buy them?" And then the <laughs> third thing I said was, "Oh yeah, you can just buy them. Let me go buy them." And then it was like, "All right, yeah, I'll do this forest thing. I'll do that. What was some kind of haunted spooky house thing you got going? That seems fun. I'll I'll do that. <laughs> like a solid one, one, one time, maybe two times. I don't know, but." <laughs> I got, I got Crucible to play, man. I'm trying to keep this marriage going. There are plates spinning. You know, you got you to gotta pick your battles. <sighs> yes, All right. Well, we should get to this interview. This is straight up a fantastic interview. I'm coming off a of Lupo last week and uh, onto this one now. There is so much content, so much good info to be had in these two. Um, but before we get to this, uh, we need to give a shout out to our sponsor this week. Audible. Audible. What would it look like if we all listened more? Listening to audiobooks motivates us, inspires us, even brings us closer together. And there's no better place to listen than Audible because now Audible members get even more exclusive audio fitness programs, audiobooks, Audible originals, and more. Whoa. It's got the largest selection it's on the planet. Uh, and now with the originals, the selections got even more custom with content made just for members. And every month, Audible members get one credit good for any audiobook they choose, plus two of the originals from a changing selection they can't get anywhere else. It's fitness, health, created exclusively for Audible, and the books are yours to keep. You can go back and re-listen anytime. You can even cancel your membership. Uh, and if you didn't like the book you selected, exchange it. No questions asked. Boom. This book sucks. Give me a new one. <laughs> I am. I, it is such a good time for books right now. I've read so many great books in the past two months, and uh, with Audible and with this new Kindle coming out, you can listen to them. Hey, if you have not read David Sedaris's new book Clip, so it's fantastic. If you haven't read his like early stuff, if you haven't read Barrel Fever, get on it. It's so good. If you like sci-fi, oh man, Shishin Liu, who did Three Body Problem, put out a new one called Ball Lightning. That was excellent. If you want something a little bit lighter. Uh, goofy name, but they're so good. The Murderbot Diaries, which is a series of four novellas. Oh, Chef Kiss. <laughs> what else? I'm scrolling, man. I'm scrolling. Uh, the Reactionary Mind by Corey Robin. Leveling me up. Uh, you can read the Chapo book. That's a fun one. Uh, and my Ukrainian friend, who I started a book club with, recommended a classic piece of Russian sci-fi, Roadside Picnic. You will read this and you will be shocked to see just how many video games have been influenced by this destiny included by the uh, the legendary Strugatsky brothers. Check it out. They're all available on Audible and uh, they're so good. There's so much good stuff to read and listen to. Oh, um, Blackfish City <laughs> by Sam Miller. That is like the <laughs> most apropos near future sci-fi I've read in like a month. And well, that's saying something because I read a fair amount. <laughs> Cut me off, please stop month. me. If you want to read... Well, listen to audiobooks like birds. You can start a 30 day trial, and your first audiobook is free. So go to audible.com slash crucible or text crucible to 500 500. That's audible.com slash crucible or text crucible to 500 500. You can do it with audiobooks. Now, without further ado, let's get to this great interview with Mr. TV. He's back after a long absence mm. and we missed him. And, you know, this guy always is like, he's like, I'm casual. I'm fun. I just like to have fun with the game. Music, but he also music, knows music, more music, than music, you. Music, music, it's amazing. Music, 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 Musical music, break. Music, 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 music. Do it now. Oh, 
folks, it turns out, in Portland, there's a whole uh, hardcore, post-hardcore Destiny playing scene that we had no idea about until now. We're playing on the show. You heard them a couple weeks ago. Uh, the band Black Communion. Go check them out. This week, it is If This Be Doomsday. Go listen to them. It's If This Be Doomsday.bandcamp.com. We've got so much good music coming up in the next couple weeks. But after that, we want to play your stuff. So, hey, that new album is coming out. Send it on over. We want to hear it. Crucible Radio at gmail.com. Everybody, uh, we've got a very special guest with us here tonight. Um, he was, uh, he's a returning guest. He was on the show a scant, I don't know how many episodes, but it was 116. You do the math. <laughs> I definitely remembered that and did not just look it up. But it's long overdue if you ask me. It's the one and only True Vanguard. Thank you for joining Yeah, us. happy to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. So, uh, how's this Forsaken treating you? He's like, terrible. Oh, Man, this, game, this game's a piece awful. of crap. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm loving Dead game, yeah. am I right? Yeah, I'm loving, man. I'm just, you know, I'm on the grind just like everybody else, knocking out stuff. I'm kind of to the point now where I'm less uh, focused on just completing all of the weekly, uh, you know, powerful reward things. I'm mean, Right now, I'm just more focused on just enjoying the experience and using all these mm-hmm. cool things that I've collected, uh, you know, over the course of the past month. Or how long has it been since a lot? I don't even know. Yeah, it's been years, it's been it a, feels like. <laughs> <laughs> well, to me, it feels like it's been out for a couple of weeks. And then I'm like, wait, yeah. what day is it? No way. <laughs> they all kind of blur feels, together. You know, once you hit the, the powerful cat, like the 600, you just feel like you can start to do what you want. And yeah, that's how absolutely. I just hit it. And I'm just like, yes, I can finally focus on the one thing rather than like being obsessed with all of the bounties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) I definitely uh, identify with that. Um, (laughs) No, I I really appreciate that. Like, I think I definitely have felt a little overwhelmed with just like so much stuff to do. So many things with, with engrams uh, dangling at the end of them. That's like, I need to check all these boxes. And it's like, no, I mean this, we play this game to have fun. You should, you should, make sure you prioritize the fun part of it for yourself. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, but then also on the flip side of that, I know that one of their, you know, Bungie's mantras for the whole Forsaken DLC is that they're trying to restore the hobby aspect of Destiny 2. And I think I mean, I think they did that. They, they created all these things that you can complete if cuz some people are like that. They're just they love checklists. And that's that's like my wife. She she's, she wants to have a checklist and she wants to go down, she wants to check every single thing off and that's where the satisfaction, you know, comes from. So not everyone plays the game the way that I do, you know, and some people absolutely adore that checklist aspect of it and sort of having that hobby, just these things to do every week. It's it is it is a lot though. I mean, it's 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 I think it's also it stands out from the year we've had uh previously. It's definitely just especially this week. There's like four events happening. I know there's <laughs> only two, but it feels like four. Yeah. <sighs> so what are you prioritizing this week, uh TV? You know, I um I adore the raid. I, I really do. And uh, I've enjoyed kind of, I, f- I feel like every raid I get a new sort of experience in terms of uh, the social side of things. Because, um, you know, every time a new raid comes out, it starts out with, okay, who's going to be my raid launch day crew, right? And yeah, so the, um, it's always... players, right? Right. It's all different. <laughs> it's always been different for me. So, uh, you know, this time around, I got to um, really spend a lot of time with, like Miss 5000 Watts, guy named Sloping Drake, and um, some other folks that kind of run in that crew. And it's been really fun to meet some new people in the raid experience and have some people that I hang out with now on a weekly basis that I, I never did before this DLC launch, you know? And I, I played with Watts only a handful of times collectively in the last several years. But then since Forsaken dropped, you know, we've, we've played several times together. So it's kind of good just to have new social dynamics as well. So I'm still doing my raids every week. And um, on top of that, I've been having a, honestly just a whole lot of fun doing lots and lots and lots of quick play and just kind of mixing and matching new pieces of armor and different builds and armor perks and weapons and kind of creating new builds to play with and just kind of have some fun. And um, another side of that, again, is the social aspect 
you know, uh, before Forsaken came out, one of my closest friends that I made in the Destiny community had sort of stepped away from Destiny and now is back into it. And and since Forsaken dropped, I have now streamed, you know, probably I would honestly probably like 50 times now with KJ Hovey and we get to play a lot together now again, like we used to. And it's just been a blast. So he and I are streaming almost every day together. And it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. That's awesome. like seeing the, the crew back together. That's mm-hmm, awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, that, I, you know, I, I think we've always kind of pointed out that every time there's a new release, there's always a meta that emerges pretty quickly. And, you know, usually the, the, the rough cut of it is right. But over time, I mean, even up till the, the, you know, the weeks before the new release, people are still finding new things that have been buried in their new weapons, maybe, uh, you know, new synergies within the subclasses that, um, you know, maybe are not going to be top tier, but really have uh, have something going for them. I'm curious to know, you know, as as sort of the initial wave has passed and you've started doing that thing you do and really digging in and finding some of the, the hidden gems, uh, what has stood out to you and sort of what surprised you in terms of its viability? You know, I was really surprised at how well uh, sidearms held up in the shift, you know, because it which is interesting because I, I always thought that they've been really comparable to SMGs. But SMGs are like, if you look at the stats right now, like nobody's using SMGs. Uh, very few people are, uh, at least effectively. And I can tell you on the comp side of things or Iron Banner, you just don't see them. They're like freaking unicorns. They have not really held up well in the sort of meta shift, which honestly, I think it's okay to have seasons. You know, they they were really prominent in previous seasons and not so much now, which I think it's cool to have sort of refreshes during these uh, changes. But I was really surprised the sidearms, which I think are pretty comparable to SMGs in a lot of ways, have really uh, held up quite well. And uh, it's cool to see uh, guns like the Anonymous Autumn I really have a strong presence in the current meta, and they they surprised me. I was not at all surprised. I, I called well in advance that this would primarily be a pulse shoddy and hand cannon shoddy meta, and I think that's pretty true. And spending any amount of time in the competitive playlist or an Iron Banner will sort of reinforce that. So that was not a surprise at all. But um, I was also surprised to see how effective some some of these sort of n- niche things in the subclass skill niche. trees are. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> you, you're allowed niche. to be wrong on your own show. I suppose it's okay, <laughs> but <laughs> love you. Um, I've had so much fun in the, uh, the new night stalker skill tree, the spectral blade stream, the way of the wraith. Oh, Oh, mm. dude, it's so okay. much fun. It was, you, the freaking flawless execution chaining. Oh, have any of you guys Let's- played with that? Let's hear all about it, too, because yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, you, you just dropped a lot there. Like, you put out a video a month ago called Sidearms Are Better Than Shotguns, and I we are not going to let that that comment slide. <laughs> I would like to know more details, but let's start off with the subclasses. I mean, y- you know, the good stuff is good, but I think that, yeah, this new Night Stalker subclass has not gotten a lot of love. People are having trouble with it, although, mm-hmm. um, I mean, you point out this flawless execution. It's It's something you kind of have to play around, you really sort of have to embrace it as a play style. I mean, what does it look like when you're using it well? Okay, so first of all, let me just draw a contrast here. Um, if you remember, there was a VOD that Bungie released um, probably, I want to say maybe a month and a half before Forsaken dropped, where Claude, who is, um, he's basically the guy that that designs this, no, he's not alone in it, but he's the guy that really dreams up the subclasses and the skill trees, in, uh, in Destiny 2, and that's kind of his job. That's his focus. So he's the one that sort of created these new subclass skill trees and and refined them. And one of the things that in that VOD he talks about is, you know, we made a Hunter subclass that was sort of an easy button, that anyone could pick it up, they could push the super button and know that they're going to get kills with it. And that was the Blade Barrage. So that's been a very, very, very popular choice for people is to use the Blade Barrage. And it was designed to be a sort of, you don't really have to think too much. You just, if there's people in front of you, you push the super button and those people will die. Uh, but that is not the case for the new Night Stalker uh, Way of the Wraith skill tree because this one is a much more technical uh, sort of a build where you really have to be cognizant about the things that are available to you. And this is really, honestly, in my opinion, this is very in line with the way that Night Stalker has always played, is that its neutral game has really been strong. It's the super that's sort of lackluster, 
But I think the thing is that people are getting this disconnect where they think that um, Spectral Blades is equal to uh, Blade Dancer, and it's not. They do not play out the same way. Those supers are drastically different. So I think people went in with this expectation that this is going to be the new Blade Dancer, and when it didn't pan out to be that, they were disappointed and they walked away from the subclass. And I think that's a, a little disappointing because they sort of missed the thing that this subclass is all about. It really is a stalker subclass. It's all about being uh, sort of taking in extra information from the battlefield that nobody else gets and then making taking certain routes and making decisions based on the information that you're taking in, whether you're in your super or not. So flawless execution, if people who are listening are not familiar with the subclass or they haven't played it yet or not haven't you know spent any time with it, basically when you're crouched or sliding and you get a headshot kill, a precision kill of any kind, that's going to make you go invisible and give you what's called true sight so that you can see through walls, you can see anything on the map, any person through walls, and um, you have several seconds to do this, and if you actually have the Graviton forefoot helmet on, it extends your duration to 12 seconds, which that may not sound like a long time, but it is a lot. that is a lot of time for you to be invisible <laughs> and see everything on the map. So what you can see while that's active is you can see not just through the walls, but you can see what that person is running in terms of what class are they? Are they a warlock? Are they a titan? Are they a hunter? And now you've got some information about how you might approach that engagement just based on that information alone. You can also see what they're holding. Do they have a rocket launcher on top of their shoulder? Oh, dang, better back off that. Don't want to push that guy. You know what I mean? So you can take in all kinds of information. You can even see what direction they're facing. So you know whether you should push this, whether you should jump around the corner to engage them. You have all kinds of cool information. But people don't like to think that much sometimes. They just want something that's simple. (laughs) You know what I mean? So I think it really is for the seasoned hunter, uh, people who like to play more tactical and are really quick in terms of making decisions based on information that they're taking in. So it really isn't an easy subclass to play. I think that's why it's not so popular. But if you're willing to give it a shot and you're willing to sort of train your brain to think about things more tactically, you might really love this subclass. Well, let me ask you a couple of questions because you're, I think, one of the first people who um, I've seen who's really embraced the subclass as, as a serious choice. Um, I'm reading the the exact perk text on my subclass perk spreadsheet. Uh, check it out. It's on my Twitter feed. Um, but one thing that Flawless Execution grants in addition to invisibility and true sight is you're going to get a boost to your melee range. Have you noticed that? I mean, does that feel perceptible to you or is that sort of uh, a side effect compared to the first two changes? It's certainly not something that I would I would view as a prevalent thing. In fact, most people are going to see you coming before you get within melee range. It's really at the sort of mid to long range that you can really take full advantage of the invisibility and the true sight, in my opinion, um, unless you're doing things like jumping around corners and avoiding direct eye contact with... Um, you know, with your opponents. But if you're running up to melee them, they're probably going to see you coming unless they're not facing you. But the thing is, I think that perk is really supposed to work in tandem with the melee ability, which makes it so that if you're invisible with true sight active uh, and you punch somebody or an opponent of any kind, then that's going to make, it's kind of like melting point, makes them weak, so they take additional damage. In PvP, that's not really going to be that much of a game changer unless you manage to sneak up behind you know, a roaming super that has damage resistance. But otherwise, you're, you may as well just go ahead and use your bullets you know, <laughs> to kill someone rather than risk running up to someone and punching them. And then you have this awkward debuff time where you can't do anything after a melee and they could turn and just put a shotgun barrel in your stomach and pull the trigger. So I think it's not really that helpful in PvP as much as it is in PvE. Do you find yourself using a particular loadout that lends itself to precision kills while crouched or while sliding? Absolutely. So it depends on the way that you like to play. And I've played a, I've kind of focused on two main different approaches. Uh, One of them is using a pulse rifle and chaperone. So I like to get my first kill with my pulse rifle at range and a good energy pulse rifle um, for me lately. Well, I mean, a lot of people like the inaugural address for energy pulse. Is That's a fantastic, fantastic pulse rifle. I've really been gravitating towards the horrors least, which is the um, corrupted nightfall specific uh, pulse rifle. The curated roll, mm-hmm. if you manage to get it, is really solid. And um, I actually threw a counterbalance mod on top of it. So it's got tier 10 stability, plus a counterbalance mod, plus Zen moment, 
it turns into a laser beam. It's really fun to use. So um, I've been using that to get my precision kills at range. And then once I've activated True Sight and Invisibility, I can creep in with a chaperone. And the chaperone is just, it is, mm, it's sensual. It's the slide, <laughs> these sliding headshots. And if you're sliding and you get a headshot with a chaperone, hey, you automatically have, well, I use the graphs on forfeit. So I've automatically got 12 more seconds of invisibility and True Sight, should I choose to use them. And uh, I can just keep chaining these kills uh, over and over and over again. So it's, it's really, really fun to do. Otherwise, if you like to be a little bit more ranged and tactical, you play a little bit more slow, a little more hands-off, you can always do a hand cannon sniper combo. And uh, Luna's Howl is so good. Otherwise, <laughs> uh, I use Trust. And these these hand cannons, I think it really is a 180s meta, especially on console. Not so much on PC. PC, it's not so much a, a 180s, more of the 140s. But I play a majority of my time on console. And it's a bit of a 180 meta. So Luna's Howl and uh, Trust are great options. Uh, for your energy hand cannon, and then using a sniper rifle. I know they're not super popular on console right now, uh, but they're a little bit more popular on PC sniping um, sniper rifles right now. So those are the two main approaches I've been using. Do you I think like, there's going to be? Do you think there's going to be a shift in the meta at all now that the extreme grind is done? Everyone's getting close to the high power, and now you can just go for stuff like mods and armor, things like that? Do you think it's going to change, or have we found I don't found know that we've found the best the options, best, but I think we've found options. the easiest options, if that makes sense. But I think we are going to start to see some people start to really think mm -hmm. tactically about the kind of armor they're wearing, what the perks are, and synergizing those things. And I think it also depends on where you spend most of your time. Is it comp, or is it quick play, or is it gambit? You know, because, I mean, recently I've been playing uh, in... I've got different armor sets and weapon sets that I use depending on where I'm playing. And so I've started to really refine my armor sets and I, I, I'm I, not very good at having a... I don't have a really good memory. So I just color coordinate everything. So if well, I put on all my Gambit stuff and I'm like, okay, let's just, we're just going to make everything blue. So every <laughs> I know that if I put a piece of armor on and it's blue, I'm like, ah, oh, that's my Gambit set. You know what I mean? So, so I've got my Gambit set, I've got my quick play I'm sniping smart. set, I've got my quick play <laughs> you know, shotgunning set. So, um, you know, and that's kind of how I, I roll. But you can coordinate all kinds of things, like whether you want unflinching or you want dexterity I, or you want, uh, you know, all these various new armor perks, and you can really tailor make your your loadouts. I think people are going to start getting creative. A um, couple, a couple more things just on this um, uh, wraith subclass. Um, just real quick, I mean, with the smoke bomb um, doing damage over time now. Um, I mean, I, I think for me, like that, that has made the viability of um, what are they called? Spike grenades, um, a little more plausible. You've got you know sort of a, a limited uh, area of effect, but you can lock it in by sort of locking them down. Do you think the corrosive smoke has brought back the wombo combo as an effective uh, strategy, or are they still better used individually and situationally? I almost always use, uh, oh man, I'm blanking out on the name of it, but I'm using the shade step that if I do it in close proximity to someone, it gives me my melee ability back. So in a pinch sometimes, I'll just roll, uh, like say I get to the bottom of my magazine, I'm like, crap, they're almost dead, but they're not dead. So I'm going to roll and then throw a smoke because I just automatically get that cooled down. So usually I'm using the wombo combo. I think they work great together, and I definitely do agree with you. I use the spike grenades exclusively in PvP. And, uh, and then in a pinch, I can just get my smoke grenade back on command just by rolling and then throwing it at them for some uh, extra damage at a pinch. All right. And finally, what is, um, I mean, we've all seen the videos with the uh, bug that's currently going on with the Gweissen vest and the, the never-ending uh, super. But <laughs> with, without that um, fun bonus effect, what's up with the super? What should, we, what should we be doing with this super? This is not a team-wiping super, in, and it's not a shut down another super super. Although you can, I, I have had one-on-one -on -one straight up duels with uh, Arc Striders and come out on top and you feel pretty epic, but it is it is not something that you would use to wipe an enemy team. It's more about controlling a position or clearing a small area or clearing a flanking route that you want to take. So you take in information with True Sight and then you decide, okay, well, if I want to move in and I want to take control of this power ammo, what I really need to do is take this guy out that's on the side here. So I'm going to I'm gonna go over there with my super. I'm going to chop, chop, get him dead, maybe get one other person, but then now I'm going to be on the backside of these other opponents. 
and I can take them out. They're now sandwiched in between me and my teammates, and they're going to have to choose who they want to face. And we can team fire them down, get control of the power ammo, and then turn the tide of the fight. So it's it's not something that you're going to be like, oh, they're all spawning on C. I'm popping my super. I'm going to run there. I'm going to kill everybody. You will <laughs> find yourself switching to a different. You're going to be switching to Blade Barrage <laughs> at the end of the match. So <laughs> it's Does an, it help it, after each kill to say, chop, chop, now you're dead? <laughs> In my experience, no, because that's an embarrassing thing oh. to say. <laughs> that would make you a nerd. I I feel like I need to jump in here and tell one of my favorite stories from the uh, the summit because I I missed the first day and missed Gambit entirely that first day. Okay, and I remember running into you, TV, the next day and being like, "How was it? How was everything?" Because like I knew about it, and TV told the story about how like the new super and specifically this super talking about it like way back then and saying like, I popped into Gambit. Like he's like went through the the portal and like just went invisible and like just took like stood, but you stood by the, uh, the bank and wait, waited yeah. for all of them to come yeah. through. And that was like, that got me so excited for all of it. <laughs> like that whole day. Uh, and that was like one of my first conversations that day. So my question out of that is, are you using it in Gambit still? In Gambit, I personally, uh, with the guys that I run Gambit with, I don't run Hunter. I choose to run um, either my Warlock or my Titan. But mm-hmm. I will say it's it's a pretty obvious choice at this point that Blade Barrage is the superior choice for Gambit just because it does unparalleled amounts of damage to the Primeval, especially if you hit him with a Melting Point first. And then you toss that thing out. Oh, it's, it's it's ridiculous. And so the one thing that at the summit that um, Special Blades was good at was invading. But honestly, at this point, I think that the thing is at the at the summit, we did not have Sleeper Simulant. We did not mm-hmm. really know the spawn locations of the invaders. Uh, we didn't have Queen Breaker's bows, you know, Um and so it was a little bit different atmosphere. So we didn't have all these things available to us. But now that we do, I think it's pretty obvious that in terms of invasion, it's you're much better off using a sleeper or queen breakers uh, to shut down the enemy team rather than uh, using your super energy. And super energy is now really primarily used to focus damage to the prime evils. So I don't think it's going to ever have a real strong presence. So you started to explain a little bit uh, about your loadout there, and in particular sniping. Um, I'm curious to know. I mean, sniping in D2 is is just not in the same place uh, as it was in D1. Um, but you did put out a video recently that I think talked about sort of what your priorities ought to be if you're if you're sort of focused on a sniping based uh, play style. Um, I mean, sort of run, run us through the checklist. If you're if you're committing to a sniper as your secondary weapon. Um, what should be going through your head? Sort of what are you optimizing for? What are the things you need to have in order to be successful with it? Yeah. Well, first, let's, there's a few different levels to this and tiers to this. So let's focus on armor first, and then we'll talk about the rest of your loadout in terms of your weapons after that. So if we're looking at armor, here's what I do um, let's talk about the helmet first. So you're just going to go from the top down. Helmet, you're going to want to have one of two things. You either want precision weapon targeting or you want, um, a sniper rifle targeting. So those two things are going to increase your um, target acquisition and ADS speeds. So uh, that's definitely a must. Uh, precision weapon um, uh, targeting is a little bit less of a buff to your sniper rifle, but the thing is it also will apply to your hand cannon. So it'll give a, a little bit of a smaller buff to both your hand cannon and your sniper. Uh, or if you're running a sidearm, which I'll get to later, then you could just just do the sniper rifle target acquisition um, enhancement on your uh, on your helmet instead, and give it a little bit of a, a better buff. So number two thing you're gonna want, uh, looking at gauntlets, chest, boots. Uh, between these things, you really want to have uh, scavenger covered for your sniper, because it's really important to be able to take twice as many shots as you otherwise would. So if you're running no scan, I think this is a no brainer, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, not bad. Do you want to pick up one bullet or two bullets? <laughs> it's and all you have to do is just wear <laughs> an armor perk. I mean, yeah, it's a no brainer. Definitely have scavenger on for sniper uh, somewhere in your, your armor build. You're also going to want preferably enhanced unflinching. And the way that this perk works is interesting. 
Uh, again, in true Bungie fashion, it doesn't tell you how the perk works. It just has a name. And so people are like, that sounds like it's going to help with Flitch, but it doesn't <laughs> actually change the amount that your reticle bounces or anything. That's not what it does. Um, the thing that I, I would tell you, go go watch a Fallout video. I think, I think Fallout <laughs> oh, plays... Damn. I think Fallout Ooh. plays. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Fallout plays. This, this, he's such an underrated YouTuber. He really is. He's so thorough and he makes fantastic videos. So I would highly encourage people to check out his stuff. His content is just, it's so well done. But um, he's super analytical. And he talks about this un, unflinching perk and how it, it's not that it changes the amount that your reticle is going to bounce or the, the amount that your scope is going to shake. It doesn't do that. But what it does do is it's kind of interesting. It kind of like pulls your reticle or it pulls where the bullet's actually going to go back in if you're off to the sides. It's it's really bizarre. The thing that I would maybe compare it to is, do you remember in Destiny 1 when we had No Land Beyond and people started calling it No Flinch Beyond? Because when you were being pelted with bullets, sometimes like the barrel of your gun would be pointed up to the sky because you're getting <laughs> flinched so hard. But if the target was still in the middle of your screen and you pulled the trigger, even though the barrel was pointing at the sun, the bullet would still go straight and hit the guy um, because no land would shoot through flinch like a boss. And so it's not this, it's not to the same degree, obviously, or else people would be pissed, but, um, <laughs> but it's sort of the same, the same idea, even though your screen or your reticle is bouncing like crazy, your bullet's still going to go more straight than it otherwise would. So it's not a major buff, but every little bit helps. So you may as well try and get it. Um, Let's see what else. What else? What am I missing? We got target acquisition. We got unflinching. The unflinching. We got scavenger. I think we're mostly. Oh, dexterity. I'm sorry, missed this one. There we go. Um, so look for sniper rifle dexterity as well. And so dexterity, if you're not familiar with that term, it's basically your handling. How fast are you going to pull the gun out and whip this baby around? How fast are you going to be able to actually fire a bullet out of the, out of the thing? Because you may you may notice that sometimes you switch your sniper and you pull the trigger, but nothing happens because the gun wasn't ready yet. Well, if you have higher dexterity, higher handling, you're going to be able to shoot faster after swapping to the gun or coming out of an animation of some kind, whether it's a shade step or uh, an Icarus dash, whatever it may be. So those are the things that you really want to focus on having somewhere in your armor perks uh, represented there. Now, in terms of the weapons you want to run with a sniping loadout, um, most people are going to think about primarily hand cannons and coupling a sniper with a hand cannon. So hand cannons are really good at cleaning up body shots. And uh, also people are thinking, well, I need a primary weapon that's going to be able to shoot something in closer range if I have a sniper. But I would encourage you to think beyond that. Don't think so simplistically. Yes, these things historically have always been good partners, hand cannons and snipers. And you're not making a bad choice to do that, but you may also consider some other options like Cerberus plus one. This is actually a really nasty combo. Like it's a really mm. nasty combo. Um, and if you ever want to see this thing in action, um, drop a follow on KJ Hovey's Twitch channel. And when he goes live, tune in and say, hey, TV told me to come and check out your Cerberus plus Sniper combo, and he will show you how nasty it is. And I've played with this guy dropping 50 plus kills, or I'm sorry, E limbs in a match. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. I'll keep him honest. <laughs> he's using his Cerberus plus a, uh, a Sniper, and the Cerberus is just so good in close quarters at shutting down shoddy apes and cleaning up body shots. And um, I would encourage you to that's, that's, consider. It's really interesting. I mean, I talked about it on the show a couple of weeks ago, and I think I sort of registered it as like a fun quick play weapon because I was comparing it to sort of the dedicated choices within that sort of set of functionality, right? So like, you know, a, a shotgun in close range is going to kill faster than the Cerberus, right? Mm -hmm. An auto rifle is going to kill a lot faster than the Cerberus at mid-range. Um, but when you're running a sniper rifle, you're tr you have to cover multiple bases with your other slot. You need a primary. You need something that's going to sort of cover close to sort of mid-close range. You need something that can shut down supers. You need something that's got a rate of fire that's not going to leave you high and dry if you miss that shot. Mm -hmm. And I could see it really kind of covering all those bases if um, you're exclusively focused on sort of the long-range precision shot with your other choice. Yeah. And uh, another good option is sidearms. And I I have done a lot of sniper plus sidearm combo in Forsaken, and I'm I'm in love. So, and I think some people say <laughs> sidearms 
better than shotguns? What? <laughs> now, who would go and do a crazy <laughs> thing like that? Somebody who wants to get clicks and views on YouTube. That sounds, <laughs> sounds like some money-hungry piece of crap. <laughs> yep. I, I clicked. I clicked. Uh, I clicked. I got gotcha. you. Um, Thanks for your money. It, it, <laughs> it worked well, so um, I'm guessing part of uh, part of what's required to make that uh, a statement that's even in the ballpark is not holding forward continuously. Mm-hmm. Um, but sort of like l- l- let's talk about sidearms. I, I do want to come back to snipers, but um, sort of in in terms of this pairing, what is it that you like about them? Why are why are they going to work this season? Sidearms. Um, let me first and foremost just say this, um, and I did say this in the video. That claim is is for quick play. It's for standard crucible. It's not for comp. The comp meta is a, is a different atmosphere and it plays out differently than quick play. And um, so that, that doesn't necessarily always apply there. But for the overwhelming majority of people who are going to be spending most of their time in quick play, I think that sidearms are a phenomenal choice. And I would take a great sidearm over a great shoddy personally, um, you know, nine out of 10 times. So the reason being, A, you will never encounter, well, not, I suppose I can't say never. You will much less frequently encounter an ammo drought. So primary ammo, a little bit easier to come by. You have a lot more of it. And so I find myself racking up we ran out of metals a lot more easily because I'm not running into ammo droughts as often. So uh, sidearms are also really, really accurate from the air. And sometimes you might find that your shotgun is just blanking or things, especially slug shotties, their inner accuracy is hot garbo. And uh, can be infuriating <laughs> sometimes when you're like, I don't, I don't understand where this bullet, or where the slug could have gone. The barrel's pointed straight at the guy, unless it sh- shot out the side of the barrel. I don't know. But um, sidearms are um, by by design a lot more accurate from the air. So you can use your vertical space, juke people, bait corners, bait doorways a lot more effectively with a sidearm than you can with a shotgun, in my opinion. And um, they also have some other interesting perks that you can you can chain together to make for some really nice multi kills that sometimes you just can't do with a shotgun because with a shotgun half the time you've got one or two um, you know shots in the chamber you know you, you don't have a ton of buckshot to work with so you may get one kill with two shots or two kills with two shots and then you gotta like clumsily run over the bodies while the third guy's pushing you and you're trying to like shove the buckshot back up and you know chamber <laughs> the round cock the thing <laughs> but with sidearms their reload speed is fantastic right that's just one of the things that innately they do well they reload really really fast so that can mean that you can do things like kill clip or rampage and then you can just absolutely start melting people and and i have just had so many moments where i just put the controller down and i put my hands in my hair like oh my gosh that was awesome because <laughs> like, i'll play like three four or five people in a row and you're like that was so much freaking fun and sometimes with a shotgun you just like I said, it's just a little bit more clumsy. It's a little bit more awkward because you, you have this awkward long reload animation thing that you got to do. And then they also don't have very good handling speed. So sometimes you, you pull it up, you're pulling the trigger, and it's like, it's not shooting yet. And then you cry because you die. So um, I just I just like the, the sort of ceiling of things that you can do with a sidearm more than what you can do with a shotgun. And yeah, I suppose that's that. I've had a bunch of sidearms drop, and I, I, you know, it's interesting. I think maybe more than other weapon types, I feel like sidearms have got um, a pretty nice uh, perk pool for what can you can get on a random roll. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like I've gotten a lot of combinations where it's like, oh, that's good, and then I get something completely different. And go, oh wait, that's that's good. Um, I mean, I think you know, kill clip, rampage, those are both obvious choices. Uh, rangefinder is never a bad choice, but I guess for you, and, and maybe we're talking about quick play here. What, what's 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 the god roll you want on a sidearm? I mean, if you if you get to take your pick, what's really going to have the the sort of highest utility out of yeah. all the different choices? Well, let me first say that on sidearms, I think that kill clip is a better option than rampage. Um, rampage isn't bad, but mm-hmm. with uh, with sidearms, you generally have not a huge magazine to work with. And usually by the time you reload something, you're only going to get a couple of bullets off before the benefits of Rampage are gone. So I would rather have the ability to dump, you know, three quarters or half of my magazine into a guy and secure the kill, reload the thing. And now I've got kill clip and a little bit extra time to work with to shred the next guy. So I think the kill clip is better on sidearms and Rampage innately. But my god roll that I've been using uh, almost exclusively is more focused on just being consistent all the time, consistently lethal all the time. No, no kill clip, no rampage. What it has is rangefinder. It has a Great. tier ten range masterwork, 
Also good. It has accurized rounds, and uh, and it also has outlaw. And this this thing is just because of all of this extra range that it's getting. It's just even with a sniper rifle, I'm finding it pretty easy to you know at range hit a body shot and then switch to the sidearm and just go tap tap and just make sure that I center that reticle every time. And even with the damage drop off. Um, you know, that you get with a little bit further range, you can still finish up, clean up your kills pretty easily. And um, yeah, at that range, it might not be as good as a trust or as a Luna's Howl to get the the one tap to clean it up. But I can tell you this, when you see a Titan full sprint with a shotgun in his hand, running straight <laughs> in your face, give me a sidearm. Do not give me a trust. Do not give me a Luna's Howl. Give me a sidearm. And I will make that Titan regret being a Titan. <laughs> right. And, and it's just, yeah, it's just, I think a little bit more versatile in the current, in the current meta because the overwhelming majority of players are holding forward in quick play. They're holding forward with shotguns and that's just the reality of it. So, yeah. One, one thing that took me a second to get my head wrapped around with sidearms is I think the, the temptation, especially for the, the non burst sidearms is really to fire it as fast as the gun can shoot. And if look, you're, you're backpedaling while someone is closing on me, the shotgun, that is a great choice. Um, but I found that when I was sort of engaging at more, the limits of the range, especially if I was close to getting the kill and really wanted to seal it, like taking my time to let the, mm-hmm. um, you know, k- k- kind of hit that, that pacing with it. I mean, any, any thoughts there or sort of rule of thumb? Yeah, absolutely. So if if they are a little bit further away, maybe uh, five meters away, something like that, I would encourage you to pace your shots a little bit better. Don't you don't want to fire it as fast as it could possibly go, obviously. And uh, you're you're still uh, with the like the anonymous autumn archetype at that range. You're probably going to be hitting like forty four damage to the head. So it's it's really in your best interest to just uh, tap 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 at that range. But I will say this, if they are getting really, really close to you and you do need to just fire off as many rounds as possible and know that you're not, you know that they're going to connect, a lot of people struggle. I get this question all the time, like, how are you firing it that fast? Well, here's the thing. I don't use my pointer finger to pull the trigger. I use my middle finger to pull the trigger. And there's a reason for that. What? So with your pointer finger, uh, do, if you have a controller next to you, just try this for a second. Pick it up. And hold it like it. you okay. would. I'm doing it. Hold it like you yeah. would. And sure. put your pointer finger on, on the right trigger. Now you'll notice that when you're pulling the trigger with your right finger, what you're pulling against is sort of this, um, I don't know what you would call it. It's not the palm of your hand. It's like right at the base of your fingers. Like, I don't know what you'd call those, like these the bumps right at the base of your fingers, you know? That's sort of where you're pu- what you're pulling against. So you're pulling it kind of in towards the right, if that makes sense. That's where your leverage is. So it's kind of an awkward angle to be pulling against. But if you put your middle finger on uh, the, the trigger, now your leverage is in the palm of your hand down closer to your wrist. And you're pulling that trigger, squeezing it in between just above your wrist and your middle finger. And you have a lot more, it's just more strong, more stable leverage. And um, you can get a lot faster trigger pulls that way with better leverage against the the sort of the lower palm of your hand than you can with your pointer finger. Um, with Phoebe, you might have just changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, is this is this something you you sort of switch to in this scenario, or are your I am are your middle fingers one hundred percent? I never use my pointer finger to pull the trigger. My pointer finger does not sit there. I'm looking at a ah. controller with the four buttons up top, and I'm like, surely they designed it like this. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't do it. I can't wrap my brain around it. I got a... Yeah. That's fascinating. Huh. All right. Well, we are going to try that out and report back. <laughs> um, I got homework. <laughs> okay. I, I did want to lightning round a couple things before we move on from snipers, just because you're, I mean, you're going for it on the sniping front. Um, first off, um, just just real quick. In terms of name recognition, and you know, base stats count for so much for sort of those things you talked about of of handling speed of aim assist. Um, what are going to be the the sort of go to snipers that you know roll aside are going to be the ones that are a good starting point mm-hmm, for sure. Uh, I would say Alona's God is is still one of the best sniper rifles in the game, and is pretty accessible relatively speaking. I think that a lot of um, you know. Destiny gamers at this point, unless they're new with the Forsaken, a lot of Destiny gamers already have one of those. 
And that will always be a really zippy, great handling, pretty solid target acquisition sniper rifle to play with. And it really rewards headshots and can kind of be punishing to body shots. So it's a really great sniper to use to sort of train yourself to you know, really focus on taking your time and taking the right shot. But it can also be really zippy in a pinch if you need to get a quick scope off. Uh, so that one's still really, really strong. The supremacy is something that you might end at but not start at. The supremacy has phenomenal handling. So if you are already really good on the sticks or uh, with mouse and keyboard, you're a highly accurate player, the handling speed on it is, like you don't even need snapshot or quick draw sometimes because I think it's just so zippy. So uh, obviously if you get those things on top of it, that's even better. But you might find that that's sort of a good ending point if you're a little bit more seasoned with sniping. Somewhere in between, uh, I have grown to really love Bite of the Fox. Bite of the Fox with the right rolls is, uh, it's my go-to sniper at this point. I just love it so much. So I'm running my Aphidian Aspects to have a little bit faster, you know, redding speeds. But then I'm also stacking all these sniper mods on top of it, uh, armor mods on top of it. Plus, I've got on my roll uh, snapshot uh, plus handling. So it's it's a lot more zippy than a high impact sniper generally is. So with the right rolls, it could, it could be really, really zippy. And the target acquisition is not bad. And I actually threw on a target adjuster mod onto it on top of that. So plus it has opening shot on it, which gives you a little bit more target acquisition on your opening shot. So uh, that's a fantastic one. I would highly encourage everyone, even if you hate Iron Banner, it's worth it this week <laughs> just to get the curated yeah, rolls. Because curated roll. rolls, this is really good. And you won't regret getting that thing. I would say maybe stay away from Dread Adventure. The Gambit Sniper is, um, I think that that sniper could be potentially decent in PvE, but I don't ever see it having a, you know, a spot among the best in mm. PvP. Even with some really great roles, I think it, at best it's only ever going to be mediocre. So, I mean, obviously in the right hands it could do some real damage, I'm sure. But um, I just think you can't argue with stats, and base stats-wise, it's just not your best bet. So those are some. All right. Well, you mentioned um, the, uh, the targeting acquisition uh, mod, which uh, answers that question. Um, the last one, and this is one I've been thinking about for a while. I mean, in Destiny 1, when it came to sniping, we had sort of real clear identity with scopes. You know, at first it was ambush, and then sort of near the second half, it became more about the short gaze scopes as, um, you know, something that's going to make, it's going to be a significant factor in your success with the sniper. Um, do you think that's the case in D2? Well, are there um, any that you look for? Man, the, or the, if the not, I mean, what are you looking are for? are sometimes hard to remember. I can tell you this, the Silicon Neuroma has one of the best uh, you know, scopes in the game, and in my opinion. So if you can get a Silicon Neuroma, I, I should have mentioned this is one of the best snipers in the game, because it is, but I, I didn't think to at the time. But that one is fantastic. The uh, short-range scope that's on that. the Maxim is really so good. <laughs> the uh, the one that comes on the Bite of the Fox is pretty good as well. It's I, I think the less zoom, the the better. So it's the same as in... Um, same as in D1, the, the less zoom you can get in PvP, the better. And I think that that's also reflected in, in you think in Gambit, people oft, often ask me, why is it that linear fusions are so good? Well, the reason linear fusions and Gambit are so good is because their scopes are not very zoomy at all, but they still hit really hard. It's, it's basically like a scout rifle that hits really freaking hard. And I think that uh, that sort of just reinforces why those things are so good, those short-range uh, zoom values are really good on things like sniper rifles because you can take in a little bit more information, you can see more peripherals, you can adjust for uh, differences in you know, where you scope in and where you need to be. Like a lot of times you scope in and you're like, oh, I'm 10 feet to the left. But if you're 10 feet to the left of the guy with a short zoom, that's a quick flick. But if you're 10 feet to the left of the guy with a really far in zoom, you're a dragon for a while to get that thing over, if that makes sense. So the shorter, the better. Okay, one thing that's sort of been popping up now that we've got a chance to settle in with everything. Do fusions have any sort of place? Can they be used? Are they fun at all? Or or do they need something? Like, is that something you can kind of pull out and have fun with in quick play? Or are they just sort of, uh, you know, on hold for now? Well, I think the Telesto is one of the best special weapons in the game right now. Um, for 
for various reasons. I think that uh, the Aaron Till can have a strong, it could have a decently strong presence if more people get the right roles. But I. Don't tell them about <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've been messed up by a couple of good fusion riflers um, in the recent past. And I've thought, mm-hmm. man, that guy really knew how to use a fusion rifle. Good good for him. But I think that the ease of use with shotguns is just going to make most people go that way. The um, oh crap effectiveness of a shotgun is way better than a fusion rifle. Because if you say oh crap with a fusion rifle, you usually don't have enough time to get the shot off. And uh, fusion rifles also, no, no, no. they also <laughs> suffer from this this mechanic that I've always thought was wrong and weird, where if you die while shooting a fusion rifle, it doesn't shoot all the projectiles yeah. simultaneously. It shoots them in a sequence. One of the things that Destiny 1 did is it had a better perk pool for fusions. And you could do some other cooler things with fusion rifles, like, hey, I got a fusion rifle with Icarus. And now I can jump around on nibbly bibbly like kitty cat and then shot, you know, just shoot people from the sky with it and get really tight cluster spread. And it was just really fun. But you just don't see that in D2. Uh, so I wish they would, I really do hope maybe in the future they could start getting a little bit more creative with the perk pool as well. So if they adjusted those things, I think you might have a stronger presence for fusion rifles. But I can't in good conscience tell somebody they should use one unless it's one of the outliers right now. Well, I still expect you to pull one out if there's a Guardian Con tournament or something like that. So as long as that happens. All right. Well, we've talked about just about everything. I think we should round it out. Um, Let's say I just want to hold forward with a shotgun. Uh, Tell me what works for you there. It's hold forward, equip shotgun, shoot at some point. Uh, Always sliding a lot. Um, Yeah, break it down. Well, I think that honestly, and, and people don't like to... They don't like to believe this, and I get a lot of pushback whenever I say this. As much as I love sniping, I will say that shotgunning has a pretty wide skill gap, and people don't want to admit it. I think that the entry level, it's easier for people to use shotguns to be successful. I think that on the bottom end of things, shotguns, are, they're just easier to use than other special weapons. Oh, TV, you're so nice to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but but if you put a per, you put the shotgun in the hands of somebody who's like, yeah, I casually play, and then you put that shotgun in the hands of Luminosity or Zombalum or whoever it may be, ZK Mushroom, and, and the, those two people go head to head, those top tier shotgunners are going to crap all over you. There is a high skill ceiling. There really, really is. And there's things that you can do with shotguns that are more than just hold forward and pull the trigger. And your movement has a lot to do with that. Your radar awareness, your map awareness, uh, the perks that you're using and the way that you tailor make it, your dexterity, your handling, the uh, the knowledge that, hey, there's... There's two shotguns in the game right now that have 90 impact. One's the botheration, and that's a kinetic, so it works really well with uh, Luna's Howler and Not Forgotten. Or, hey, I really like my kinetic um, pulse rifle. I need a really good shotgun. Hey, guess what? Mindbender's Ambition is a 90 impact and is kind of unparalleled in that capacity, so you may want to look for one of those. Um, hey, does your shotgun have full choke on it? Does it have accurized rounds? Does it have slide shot on it? So I think that there's... People just don't like to think about it, but there is, there's a lot more to shotgunning than hold forward and pull the trigger. It may be easy to do that, and you may find yourself, at least on the bottom end of things, being a little bit more successful. But if you try holding forward and pulling the trigger with a shotgun, once you get past fabled rank, you're going to struggle, and you're going to have to learn how to shotgun better. If you had to put your finger on it, like, is what is it that's separating those top players from everyone else? Is it is it their movement or the way they choose their engagements? Yeah. Well, it's a little bit of both of those things, but primarily it's the way that they move. Absolutely. So you will you will find yourself struggling to track players on that high end uh, of the skill gap. And here's the, unf- I don't know if this is unfortunate, but this is just the reality. And this is coming from someone that plays all classes. No class shotguns as well as Hunter's shotgun. Hunters have such better up-close mobility and directional change control than any other class in the game. And because of that, shotguns are more lethal in the hands of a good Hunter than they are in the hands of a good Titan or the hands of a good Warlock. And I, I absolutely expect to get pushback every time I say that. But here's the reality of it. Uh, 
A Titan can't change directions in midair like a Hunter can. Just can't do it. They also can't change directions on the ground like a Hunter can with Shade Set. They just can't do it. And the same thing applies to Warlocks. Warlocks can floof and then awkwardly float back down to the ground. <laughs> but, but a Hunter can jump right and then he can double jump with better directional control back to the left and break your ankles. And you're wondering where he went. And in that time that you're trying to track his movement, he's already you know, put around a buckshot into your head from above. I think that's just the reality of it, and I think that's honestly pretty well reflected, especially on console. In if you're playing comp and you get to the higher end of things, like 3,500 and above, it's like three hunters on a team because people know this. It's, shotguns are just better in the hands of a hunter, and if it's a shotgun meta, then you should probably be using a hunter if you're pushing for a legend. And uh, <laughs> that's uh, maybe an unfortunate reality of the meta that we're in, but it's it's just, the, uh, in my opinion, it's the truth. I think that on PC you see a little bit more diversity just because Titans are also uh, strong on PC They with the presence of Titan skating and their ability to move in a straight line uh, really, really fast. But again, <laughs> up-close um, engagements... I think that the hunters still have a little bit more of an edge on PC, but on PC you also have uh, a mouse that helps you turn and look and track players and a wider FOV. So it's a little bit easier to to compete with hunters if you're not a hunter in that in that capacity on PC. But on console, it's a lot more um, it's a lot more accented. TV's bringing the hard to swallow pills on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. All right, here's a softball. Uh, what mod should I use on my shotgun? Ah. Um, <laughs> if you want to equip the best mod on your shotgun, you you want to hover over the shotgun in your inventory, and then you're going to want to <laughs> hold square okay. for about okay. five or six seconds. Just hold square, and it'll okay. automatically make it the best version of that shotgun. Oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that and my middle Three finger legendary on the trigger, shirts. I've got some stuff to go try. <laughs> no, if you want to put a, a, we a weapon mod on a shotgun, it, it should absolutely be Icarus. No doubt about it. Good advice, as always, Stevie. As always. Um, thank you for so much for coming on again. You always bring, bring the knowledge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all killer, no filler. My fingers will never be the same. I just, I just <laughs> say things confidently, and then people believe them. It's, <laughs> yeah, I'm well, nodding enthusiastically, so it must be working. Well, T where can someone find more of your crazy off kilter opinions about <laughs> shotguns? You can you can find me on YouTube, uh True Vanguard. You can find me on Twitch at the True Vanguard, Twitter the True Vanguard, and uh I even post some like IRL stuff on Instagram. I think I'm True Vanguard TTV there, maybe. Because everything else was taken by posers. <laughs> By the time I this old man got on the Instagram train, so I'm following you right now. Weren't you banned on Twitter? Isn't that <laughs> that may be true? <laughs> I may have threatened to kill the entire human race, and they thought that I was serious. <laughs> yeah, people listen to what you say. Apparently, TV. you got to be careful. You're so confident, <laughs> <laughs> you say it so yeah. confidently. Uh, oh. Well, TV, thank you so much. I thank you yeah, for thanks, having man. me. I appreciate the invite, gentlemen. Usually, the musical break isn't the music I had in my head. <laughs> so I'm like really <laughs> upbeat, and I'm like, the music yeah. in our head is always different. <laughs> and then, and then I listened to the episode, and I was like, oh, that's much different. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, we always need um, extremely intense metal or rap to drop at the musical break, and it is usually not that because I'm thinking my head what goes would be straight to metal every it. single time. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, and sometimes it's like a really like easygoing, like uh, bluesy job, and it's like, oh, nice. This is nice, but it's not what I had in my head. I'm thinking, what is going to make sense uh, for Andrew to kind of bed down and me to talk over and be heard over it? Mm. Um, plus, you got to have the high energy stuff up top. You need the ambient thing at the end. So, I need to break his music middle ground. But you know what, Swain, for you this week, I'm going to pick something that. Rocks fucking balls. I don't know what it's going to be, but there's so many good choices. Uh, All this yeah. is at the end of the show, right? This is the end of the show. Okay, really, good. It's really, <laughs> we're, you really we're in the want end game now. The really hyped up, crazy metal music to go with True Vanguard's personality. Dude, he he loves those rock tracks. You know, he posts <laughs> a montage, and I'm just like, where did you get this like 
kick-ass classic rock song. Like, I don't know where to find this music now. That's you know? dad's, just, man. Dad's yeah. listen to classic rock. He's got the, the dad headbanger stuff, like, locked in. It's amazing. Uh, go to our website, crucibleradio.com. Oh, let's put, yeah. plug Diet Bet. We're, we're doing Diet, Diet Bet again. Challenge. It starts. You're not too late if you're listening to this yeah, uh, listening this week. On you Monday. can get in on it. Yeah. Let's Don't worry in. about it. Hop on uh, the channel on the Crucible Radio Discord, which is open to anyone at discord.gg slash crucible radio. The channel is called hashtag sweatfest. You can Ooh. burn some pounds, baby, and win a little bit of cash in the process. It's really fun. It got my ass in motion, and that's hard to do. So give it a shot, and uh, there's a lot of people in there to support you along the way. Don't be scared. Let, me t- let me tell you this. Last time we did this diet bet, I was at... I would say a certain weight. Uh, when the diet bet finished, I was at my previous weight minus seven pounds, and I just have kind of stayed there since then. It like I have a new set anchor point. It works. It helps to have a team, and this new one, I'm I'm in, man. I'm I'm doing it. Let's do it again. I want another seven pound lower anchor point. Eh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but I have high hopes. Also, also, uh. If- I have a review coming up. It'll be in one of our episodes coming soon of uh, the new Scuff controller, the Vantage, which is available at like GameStops and all that. We'll talk about it more when I do the review. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out for that. Also, if you're buying a Scuff now, go to uh, Scuff and use our code Crucible. That's my code Crucible. C R U C I B L E. Man, I'm so good at spelling Crucible nowadays. Yeah, I don't have to think <laughs> about it. I was terrible when we started the show. Really bad. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, bye. Love you. See you. What's up, everyone? Bones here. Do you like podcasts? Do you like chill conversation? Well, me and my co-host Swain and Birds put out a bonus podcast every month on Patreon. If you want to check it out and be a part of more awesome stuff, head over to patreon.com slash crucible radio and join the squad. See you there.